document the my i'm going to share my document with everybody so um i'm going to explain every of those information on the on the document then when i'm done with the explanation along the line should we have any questions so we'll have take note of taking note of that so by the time i'm done with the explanation we can now take the question and answer session which is likely going to take like um around the 15 minutes so let's let's get started so like i said we are looking at uh, we are kickstarting the webinar and i hope for those that are just joining from the email you got from us you uh we also have the the email link to get access to the previous courses everything is actually on youtube on our youtube uh, page anyway so you can equally have access to them industry by industry at your own convenience so today uh to kickstart the industry specific quickbooks 2.0 we're actually looking at the health insurance and that is our health maintenance organization and you agree with me that um, this is uh, one of those emerging industries that just um uh, the, the new emerging industries which we now have a bigger prospect in those areas now so there's practically a need for us to have a full understanding about the uniqueness in this particular industry should in case we find ourselves in pursuing uh, our accounting career right there all right so i'm going to go ahead to share my screen then i also want to believe that um, on the platform we actually sent the download link for the uh software which is probably what we are going to use as a practice so i want to believe that some of us have downloaded that because it is one thing for us to learn here it's another thing for us to actually go through what we have learned so uh for those that are that have not installed probably at the end of this webinar if you have any probably you have some issues with your installation and all so you can equally reach out to me and um i'll be able to attend to that all right but most importantly you have to practice anything you learn from this webinar on the software all right so um I want to believe we can all see my screen please if you are able to see my screen kindly signify can we all see my screen I can see. okay great so i think we can proceed so this is actually um our work document and this particular document will be shared with everybody at the end of um this particular um, webinar so like I said earlier we are looking at health insurance so before we actually go into deeply on the accounting treatment of uh, their uniqueness some of their transactions and all there's a need for us to at least have a brief about what this particular industry is about just a brief so our health insurance is actually a type of insurance that covers medical expenses that arise due to an illness. So this expense could be related to hospitalization costs, cost of medicine, or doctor consultation fees. So what basically what we are doing under the health insurance is that somebody, because of future sickness and all, and because of the body system, 
So you probably have to insure your, your health by paying some amount of premium on a monthly basis to who we refer to as the health maintenance organization. So these are the guys you are going to pay to. So by the time you now fall sick, you can equally go and claim your premium. It's just like they indemnifying you anytime you fall sick. Just like the normal conventional insurance, where you insure, probably insure your motor vehicle against theft. And by the time it goes stolen, they reimburse you and they indemnify you. So same thing here, that will probably insure we have people, individuals, corporate organization, individual might do for their family, corporate organization as a way of their staff welfare, they can decide to onboard all their staff for an HMO by paying a premium for them on a monthly basis such that anytime any of the staff fall sick, they can equally go to uh, the healthcare providers to equally get uh, a medical service. So basically that's about the health insurance. So we have some basic types, we have the, H the different types of health insurance. There's the HMO, which is your health maintenance organizations, and I think this is what we are really familiar with. Then we also have the exclusive provider organizations, your EPOs. There's the point of services, POS plans. This is not the point of sale, not the POS we use for withdrawing, anyway. So we also have the Preferred Providers Organization, which is the PPO. So basically, these are the four types of the health insurance, but majorly we are going to focus on the HMO, which is uh, the health maintenance organization. All right. So going forward, let's also now that we have a, know a brief about what the health insurance is talking about. So let's quickly take a look at some of the key terms. Probably if you find yourself in this particular industry you might tend to get yourself familiar with these terms so the first one i have here is assignee so the assignee is you can also call the assignee you can also call it the enrollee so the assignee is that person that goes to benefit from your insurance policy that is to claim that medical expense medical service as soon as the person falls sick or needs a medical service all right so that is the assignee so you go to the hospital that or the healthcare providers place to seek for the medical service because that healthcare provider has already been registered with your hmo which is your health insurance company all right then we have the claim so the claim here is claiming the, the healthcare pro service provider will now claim the money they use in treating you they will claim for that money from your hmo which is your health insurance company so that's what we mean by claim here then we have co-payment so co-payment basically here then one thing you first of all need to know is that for the health insurance either an individual one or the corporate there's always uh, a policy document that states the whole provision of that contract you know the insurance uh the this particular uh insurance actually a contract right between the health insurance company and probably the individual or the corporate organization so what the co-payment is saying here is that uh on the policy documents we probably have agreed that the probably the health insurance company will not be taking over all the um they won't be taking over all the medical expense so you also have your own share as an individual or a corporate organization that's what we mean by co-payment so for instance if you seek a medical service you might agree that you are going to pay 20 percent of it while your health care provider uh, the health insurance company will pay 80 percent so that is a co-payment they will have so majorly we are just going to run through this so this is just to get ourselves familiarized with the terminologies what we are basically concerned about as accountants and finance professionals is to understand the uniqueness in this area and how do we treat this uniqueness as an accountant in order for us to have a complete report all right so we have the cumulative bonus we have the deductible we have the dependent we have exclusions we have networks so network basically is just 
the group of all the healthcare providers that you have, the group of hospitals that, that is registered with the group of hospitals that is registered with your uh, HMO and the group of the healthcare providers, right? So that is that. Now, we also have the grace period, that is the days of grace. We have the insurer, long-term care policy, long-term disability insurance. We have the premium, of course, we know that the premium is the amount we pay on a monthly basis, either in the individual or the corporate body for uh, getting this insurance service. And we also have the policy, which is a legal contract between the insurer and the insurer. That is the document. All right. Now, that is about the brief term on the um, for the insurance, uh, uh, the health insurance. Now, what we are basically now concerned about is this area of uniqueness. That is, what is that area of uniqueness of this particular industry? And how does this apply to us as an accountant or a finance professional? Now, the first one here is the revenue recognition. Now, the revenue recognition here, what we refer to as the end premium. Now, what, one thing we need to know here is that for an health insurance, the way it works for the HMO is that a corporate body or an individual pays a premium to us on a monthly basis so in line with the applicable standard uh for the for uh, for those of us that are familiar with high frs all right the when we get this money from the corporate organization or the um the individuals for a particular health health care plan right there's when we get this money from them initially this money does not qualify to be our revenue all right simply because we have actually not uh hand that premium we have actually not hand that premium or not until when the particular uh, plan expires so until when it expires that is when we know that oh the plan has expired it means that the particular enrollee or assignee will not go come for any claim again this is what i'm saying for instance the, in the policy, there's also going to be what we refer to as a policy period. That is, we are insuring the, our health for year 2022, for instance. That's going, probably going to be from January to December, right? Now, when they pay me this money in January 2022, I am not going to recognize this money as my revenue until the end of that policy period which is as at the end of the year, that is in December 2022, that is when it becomes a hand premium. Because I don't hand that money until when the, 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 the plan expires. You know, when it expires, you can now decide to say, oh, you want to continue with the plan or you don't, want to, you don't even want the health insurance again. That is first thing. So you are going to recognize your revenue until when the plan expires. That's when you recognize revenue. That is one. Then two, deferred revenue. So deferred revenue here is immediately they pay you that money. The corporate organization or the individual, the money goes to a deferred income. That is a deferred revenue. It's a liability to you. So the money is going to sit there, pending the time the plan is going to expire. Are we good? Then, by the time the plan now expires. You are now going to reclassify the, the the particular premium from your deferred revenue to your major revenue, which is your income account. Then the next one is your cost of sales recognition. So basically, the cost of sales here is purely the claim expenses. That is the money the health insurance company or the health maintenance organization pays as claim to the healthcare providers. You know, when the assignee goes to meet the healthcare providers, they tell them that okay, you, you go to your hospital based on the agreement between the healthcare providers and the HMOs, they are already registered with you. So any of your assignee that comes there, immediately they show them their ID card and all they know that oh yeah, you are from this particular HMO, they render the service to you on credit. 
So immediately they render the medical service to you, you are going to request the healthcare provider, which is the hospital in this case, will request for a claim from the health insurance company or the HMO. So immediately you request for a claim, that is when the HMO now pays it. That is their own cost of sale. That is their claim expenses, a cost that arises from the premium they collected from the individual uh, or the corporate organization for the health insurance. All right. Then the last one here, which is the provision for expenses, is basically making provisions for some of those claim expenses you have not gotten from the healthcare providers, but the healthcare providers have actually rendered the service. Now, let's take this one after the other and see how it works on QuickBooks. Now, one thing you need to take note of is that what we're actually looking at here is not just the way it applies on QuickBooks alone, we're actually looking at how does this work on whatever accounting software you find yourself using, all right? So the key thing here is for us to even understand the concept, not just the way to navigate about it on the software, right? So the first one, which is revenue recognition. So first thing, as an accountant or the, or the finance professional, one thing you need to take note of is that you will always request from probably maybe the um, the marketing department or the customer service department you always request for the policy document per each of the plans the healthcare plans from them why do you need to request for the policy document you need to request for this document so you'll be able to know what year or what month each of the plan will expire and how much is the total plan because that is, this is the amount they will give to you and that is what you'll be raising on your invoice are we good so the first thing you need to do is to ensure you request for the policy document for the health insurance for each of your customers that is either individual or corporate organizations from your customer service department because that is what we are going to work with here the essence of this is for us to be able to know the period that particular plan will expire so that we'll be able to know how to go about it, alright? But before we go ahead, one thing you need to first of all know is that you have to ensure you create three things on your chart of account. Are you good? The first one is your revenue account and your revenue account here is the end premium. And the second one is the cost of sales account. So your cost of sales account here is the claim expenses. It's their cost of sales, here, which is what you pay to the healthcare providers for the service rendered by um, the healthcare providers to your assignee. I hope you will know what assignee is since I've explained that earlier. All right. Then you also now need to also create a deferred income account, which is going to be a current liability. Now let's go ahead. Now, to create your chart of account, for some of us that we don't know this already, so I'm going to mention it for completeness. There are a couple of ways. Under the company, you can click on chart of account here. Or you click on company here, then click on chart of account. Or you can also work with your shortcuts by clicking on control A. Are we good? Now, for completeness too, for those of us that don't know what chart of account is, so chart of account basically is the list of all accounts that determines the composition of our report that's that on a more simpler term that's just what it means your chart of account here is the list of accounts that determines the composition of your report your chart of account here are your income account your expense account your bank account your asset account your fixed asset account your current asset account your liability account your cost of sales account those are your equity account. Those are your chart of account. Are we good? So in this case, we want to confirm that we have created three accounts. That is your income account, your cost of sales account, and your deferred income account, which is the current liability. So let's go. Let's get started. Are we good? So the first thing we need to ensure is that we have created... You can see we have one here already. This is... On end premium health plan one, you know, we can have different health plans. So you have on end premium health plan one, 
on M Premium, you might not call it L Club, but it has a name. Just for instance, on M on N Premium L N L L Plan Two. So those are your deferred income accounts. So this is the account that will keep track of all the premium that I've actually collected from the um uh, as the the uh, the corporate or individual clients that are yet to expire. Are we good? So immediately we are raising our invoice, the money will be dropping in this account. All right. Then another thing we need to ensure we have created is the sales account, which is our revenue account. So you click on account, then we'll click on new. So you specify the account type here. So it's going to be an income account, right? Continue. Then we'll give it a name. So in this case, it's going to be end premium. Don't forget, on end premium is for your uh, deferred income. That is the part of the uh, the premium that we have not earned. So end premium health plan one. Are you good? So this is going to keep track of all the plan that has expired that now becomes our own revenue. Are we good? So I'm going to save and close now. So we have so the more the health plans we have, the more the income accounts and the deferred income accounts we are going to create. Right. Then another thing now is for the cost of sale. For the cost of sale now, we also need to create that. So our account type here, you click on other account type. Then you say cost of goods sold. Continue. Then this is going to be claim expenses. Claim expenses health plan one. So we also have claim expenses for each of our health plans. So I'm going to save and close. So we have all that now, right? Now, let's now go ahead to raise an invoice. So you are raising an invoice for a corporate client, right? For all, for an individual, all right? So we need to establish two things here, right? We need to also, before going ahead, we need to confirm if these corporate guys, they paid us immediately for all their premium, or they paid some amount and they paid the rest later that's what will determine what transaction forms we are going to use here right now if they pay us immediately we are going to use sales receipts that is they are not owing us uh the the premium for this year is x amount and you pay us the whole amount at once but if it is the other way around that you paid us bit by bit because we have a an agreed amount for the total uh, for the total health plan amount on the policy document then you are going to create an invoice for the total amount then as soon as they are paying you you'll be using receipt payment to record the payment for it to reduce the balance outstanding on the invoice all right so first thing we want to do now is to raise an invoice take note that this is going to affect the deferred income account which is our on end premium right so like i said earlier you are going to get the policy document which is what states uh everything about the health insurance plan right about the expiry date about the total amount and all are you good about the type of health plan in case you have several health plans and you want to separate them for your financial reporting purposes are we good right so i go to my create invoice right so i just uh you can quickly add a new customer here let's say the customer is the silver that Silver Limited is a corporate client. Are we good? Then you select the dates. All right. So we select the the terms of payment. Is it due or received? Is it going to be due in 15 days after? Is it 30 days after or 60 days after? All right. So let's say due or received. Then here, the quantity is going to be one. And your item code here is going to be your health insurance one 
so in the description here you can say um healthcare plan one for the silver limited staff for year 2022 are you good the let's say the amount is a 12 million Alright, so if VAT is applicable, so we are going to specify that here. Alright, so let's uh, if it's not applicable, you just select non taxable and remove the VAT amount. Are we good? Then you have two options here to save and new or save and close. So if I say save and close, it means I want to save and close completely. Save and new, I want to save and create another invoice. Are we good? So I'm going to say save and close. Alright. Now, we have raised the invoice of that 12 million. So I hope we are taking notes. Now, the double entry of this transaction is debit your account receivable and credit your deferred income, which is a liability. Meaning that this is an on-end premium and we have actually, we can't recognize it as a revenue yet until when the plan expires. Are we good? So you are debiting your account receivable because there are some part of the amount they are owing us and we are crediting your on end premium with that amount All right take note of that double entry now by the time they start paying bit by bit the part of that 12 million they pay let's say we receive a 4 million from them then in that case we are going to use your receive payment feature are you there you are going to use your receive payment feature now you can either see your receive payment here or you click on customer on your menu bar here and click on receive payment same thing for create invoice are we good so click on receive payment select the customer it's going to pop up that invoice then select the amount they paid you let's say 4 million out of the 12 then select the date of payment then we tick that invoice then you select the bank account they paid to. So let's say they paid it to our GT bank account. Then I'm going to save and close. Now, I have recorded that 4 million. Now, the double entry of that 4 million is that my bank account is debited because money is coming in while my account receivable is credited. Meaning that I want to reduce the debt this customer is owing me. So if I go back to my receive payment, and select this same customer you are going to discover that you have this amount outstanding of 8 million are we there all right now that is step one step two now is now still going back to that same policy document to see when this plan expires so it's when this plan expires that determines when we are going to recognize our revenue all right so in that case in recognizing the revenue you are going to use a journal entry that is by debiting your uh, on end premium and crediting your end premium so meaning that now we are now recognizing this uh, particular transaction as a revenue so how do we go about that so we we'll go to the journal entry make general journal entry all right so you select the date take note that the date is going to be the date immediately preceding immediately after when the plan expire for instance if the plan is 1st of january to 31st of december 2021 that is when the plan covers on the policy document so it means that I am going to recognize my revenue any date after the end of the plan, which is on 1st of January 2022. That is when I can now recognize my earned premium. Alright, so in this case now, so I'm going to select the date. So if it's January to December, so let's say it ends in December and I'm going to earn the premium in January 2023. So I select the date. Then in this case now, I'm going to debit my on end premium, which is that old 12 million now. It's now just my money, but before that it was sitting in so a 
expired plan for the silver limited staff for 2022 all right so in this case now i will now credit my end premium with this same 12 billion that is going by you know our not conventional journal entry we we are familiar with from the background the foundation accounting so this is your debit this is your credit so we are debiting the on end premium to remove the amount now that now we are recognizing the revenue because the plan has expired and you are crediting your end premium for health plan one and this is it are we good so when you are done now you save all right now one thing you now need to do is that for you to save yourself the stress of going back and forth because sometimes you might even forget when the plan will expire so what you are going to do is that immediately you raise the invoice right and the money has gone to the on end premium account you are also going to come to this journal entry to post it immediately and use the appropriate dates are you good so that you now need to bother yourself on when to come back and when not to in recognizing your premium so you can just save and close that is done now so that is about the end premium and on end premium now the next one now is about the claim expenses which is uh, i think a little bit uh, straightforward So, um, when you get your bill, the invoice from the healthcare providers, you know, they are going to send you an invoice that shows that they have actually, they have rendered the service to your, uh, your assignee, which is your own cost of sale. That is your claim expenses. So when the healthcare provider gives you their invoice, you know, most of the times you are not going to pay them immediately. So you're also going to accrue for it so they bring the bill now you pay at a later time probably some weeks after or within a month based on the terms of payment agreed with the healthcare providers so in that case you are going to use your enter bills and pay bills so enter bill is for you to enter the invoice from the healthcare providers and pay bill is when you make the payment all right take note your enter bill is accounting for the payable so when you use the enter bills this is going to debit uh the affected expenses account or the cost of sales account whichever one and credit your um account payable while when you use your pay bills you know it means you have paid so we want to reduce our payable so you debit your account payable and credit your bank are we good so when you come to your enter bills you select that vendor so let me say um, Mabel Clinics. Alright, so they brought a bill for us. So this is what was read what we have on the bill. Medical service for assigning 504 then this goes to your claim expenses account directly they put the amount 141500 that is the amount spent in for this particular assignee then we can go ahead and save save and close click on yes now when we now pay that money you can equally come to your pay bills are you good then you can see all your bills from each healthcare providers will be listed out here so you can equally just tick if you paid everything in full and if not you can come here to put the amount that was paid let's say we paid the hundred thousand out of it so we select where we paid from we pay from our gt bank then you can just go to say pay selected bills all right so that is basically 
one of the major area of uniqueness in this part so the thing here is about uh, knowing the end premium and the on end premium and most importantly you have to closely work with the policy document because this is what we give the accurate information as regards how much uh, the how much what, what, when the plan will expire how much is the total amount and what is the period then what type of healthcare plan it is are we good so now we can um, roll up our questions so I think I have some questions here okay so we can roll up our questions I'll prefer we, we type it out in the chat box so I can attend to it immediately. Okay, there's a question from Olani. Uh, Can you please do a quick recap on the posting of end and on end premium? Yes, of course. So, what aspect is it? Um, the when you want to recognize the revenue, or when you are recognizing the deferred income, which is the on end premium. So, which one exactly are you talking about? So for the end premium, like I said, you actually raise you raise your invoice to capture the total amount of the end premium, uh, the on end premium. So when you raise your invoice, the amount goes to the on end premium account, which is your deferred income, and which is between when you raise your invoice between your account receivable and the on end premium. By the time the plan now expires that is when you go and raise that journal entry which is by coming to company make general journal entries so you debit the on end premium here by putting the amount see for instance and you credit your end premium here by also putting the amount all right then you put your description then save but before passing this entry, you must have ensured that you have uh, posted the invoice earlier that captures the total amount and has gone to the on-end premium account. So it's only when the plan expires 
you come to raise a journal entry to affect the the two accounts okay i think i just answered your question now uh mr lani Can we roll more questions in? And um, for your, for our information, the webinar is actually a recorded one. So basically, the a video will be available to everybody to be sent on to be sent on the platform after this particular uh, after the session. So just like we do, so so you can have access to watch the video replay over time. So we do, do we still have more questions? Please go ahead. Okay, so we have another question here. When there is a disagreement on the fee, NHIS between the HMO and an hospital over the service to a patient and there was a refund, how do we treat such? So it's going to be in two cases. That is, if we have not paid on that particular uh, bill before, it's just for us to go back there to adjust the bill to what amount is supposed to be i don't know if what i'm saying is clear but if we have actually paid so in treating that refund so it's just basically to debit our bank you know the refund is coming to the bank so you debit the bank and credit the affected account before which is your claim expenses because this is what i'm saying for instance when they brought the bill they brought the bill of uh, they brought the bill of say 105,000 and we have paid them that amount. You know, initially, when we uh, they brought the bill of 105, it has gone to our own claim expenses account, which is the cost of sale. So, by the time let's say they now agree between NHIS and all, they now give a refund of a 20,000. So, what we are going to do is just raise a journal by debiting our bank and crediting that claim expenses. To now reduce it back to ninety-five thousand. I don't know what I'm saying is clear. So that is another option. So if we have not, if, that is if we have paid. But if we have not paid, we can just go and open up that bill and correct the amount from one hundred five to ninety-five. That is all. So that means that is, is the ninety-five thousand we are going to pay. So in that case, you just use if they have paid, you just use your journal entry, debit your bank account that they made the refund to, and credit your claim expenses account. 
Do we have more questions? Okay, in the absence of um, no other question, I think we can draw the curtain and um, the re replay version of the lecture will be made available on the group uh, in the next few minutes. So I would like to appreciate everyone um, for your time. Okay, one more question. Can you talk about tax in this industry? Now, in this particular industry, their tax is also majorly like the conventional, uh, the conventional businesses. Not that they have one particular tax that applies to them, right? So VAT, withholding taxes, and company income tax. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So everything applies to them, and it is still the same way, or the same format, or the same tax laws that also govern them. For instance. For the VAT aspect, uh, for those of you that have enrolled for our course on business taxes, for the VAT part, you know, in remitting your VAT, it is you are actually remitting the net VAT, right? Which is the output minus input. So in their own case here, it's most likely they are going to suffer an input VAT because their own output VAT here is the VAT they also charge on the premium right while the input VAT here is the one they also get from the claim expenses from the healthcare provider but unfortunately their healthcare providers their services are VAT exempt so in that case there is no input VAT all right then for the withholding taxes when they are paying to they have the obligation to deduct five or ten percent depending on the case or what case it is Maybe it's an individual company uh, or uh, an individual or a limited liability company, right? And for the CIT too, the same thing is applicable. So in this industry, they don't have one basic uniqueness in terms of taxes. All forms of tax that applies to other business also comes into place here. So like I said, the webinar replay will be made available to everyone immediately after this session. So I'd like to appreciate your time. So we are going to meet again next Saturday. So before then, if you have any issues or any clarity, you can equally send me a chat on WhatsApp and we hope to get more uh, people in the next webinar. Thank you and have a good night.